Hi everybody, and welcome to Mr. Robeson's statistics class. All right. Today we're going to go over what is statistics. We're going to go over the difference between populations and samples. And we're going to go over the three ways of gathering data. All right. So first up, what is statistics, as in the course of statistics, or the field of statistics? So a little story here. When I was growing up, back in the 80s, long, long ago, there was a real fear that power lines being near schools or playgrounds or people's houses ended up causing cancer in children, specifically leukemia, blood cancer. So what ended up happening is the National Cancer Institute spent $5 million in five years gathering data to answer this question. The researchers compared 638 children who had leukemia with 620 who did not. They went into the homes and measured magnetic fields in children's bedrooms and in other rooms at the front door. They recorded facts about power lines near the family home and near the mother's residence when she was pregnant. All right, this was basically the anti-vaxxer movement of, of, of my time when I was growing up. So what did they find? Do, do power lines cause cancer? No, there was no connection between leukemia and exposure to magnetic fields of the kind produced by power lines. All right, this is kind of like the hysteria with 5G right now, where people were thinking 5G caused the coronavirus or whatever. All right, there's no scientific information to back that up. So why do I bring up this experiment? Well, this is what statistics is in a nutshell. So statistics is the science of collecting, analyzing, and drawing conclusions from data. So they saw an issue, does power lines cause cancer? They collected data. They took a sample and they, they checked cancer and power line levels and magnetic levels. They analyzed it. I'm not sure how yet, but we'll learn this year. And then they drew some sort of conclusion that there was no connection between leukemia and exposure to magnetic fields from power lines. All right, so when we're doing statistics, there's really two kinds of ways or two fields or two domains, I guess we could say, that we do statistics on. The first one is population parameters. Right, so a population is the entire group of individuals we want information about. So that's the everybody. Right? Usually we don't study just like a whole population because it's too much work. Right? A parameter is a number that describes some characteristic of the population. All right, so parameters go with population. And the easy way to remember that, here's our P and P up here for population parameters. They both start with the letter P. So if we gather information about a population and find, say, it's mean or standard deviation or median or anything about a population, we call that a parameter. <clears throat> An example, to determine the mean number of siblings of students in Mr. Robeson's classes, he surveyed all of his students. When you survey everybody, that's called the census, and found that they have an average of 1.4 siblings per student. So I did this. I surveyed you guys on the first day. You guys told me how many siblings you each had. I added them all up, divided by how many people that answered the survey, and we got that 1.4 was the mean number of students per, or siblings per student, and that number is a population parameter, the population being all students in my classes. So that was you guys. <clears throat> all right, the other domain we've got here is sample statistics. So more often than not, we will be working with samples in this class, and then the information we get from that will be called a statistic or statistics if we get multiple things. So a sample is a subset or small part of the whole. So it's not the entire population, it's a small part of it. All right. So it's contained within the population and we collect data from the sample. So usually we'll pick certain individuals just from the population and just ask information from those people. And then we use that information to draw conclusions later about populations. When we get a number that describes some characteristic of a sample, we call that a statistic. All right, so each of those numbers is a singular statistic, usually lowercase. Capital statistics is the field of statistics. All right, so an example here, to determine the mean number of green M&Ms in a small bag of M&Ms, Mr. Ropes and students took a random sample of bags of M&Ms, counted the number of green M&Ms, and found the mean to be 8.7 green M&Ms per bag. All right. This was a sample because we didn't look at all possible bags of M&Ms. That would take way too long. So we just looked at a couple bags of M&Ms, and that makes it a sample. So again, sample statistic, S and S. They go together. All right, so can we tell the difference between populations and samples? 
Right. So let's go back to our leukemia study. What were the sample and population from the leukemia study? So we didn't check to see every single child in the U.S. It specifically said that researchers compared 638 children who had leukemia with 620 who did not have leukemia. All right, so that's our sample. This 638 plus this 620 is at 1,258. So our sample was 1,258 children. All right, but the population here is not just those 1,200 people. All right, the population here would be all children because we could have selected any child. And the conclusion that we draw is that the power lines did not cause cancer in all children. So our population here would be all children. All right, so now that we can tell the difference between a sample and a population, let's see if we can figure out if something is a parameter, meaning it goes with a population, or a statistic, meaning it goes with a sample. So the leading cause of death among U.S. citizens aged 20 to 24 is accidents, accounting for just over 40% of all deaths. Mm -hmm. All right, well, we're looking at U.S. citizens. We didn't just take a, a, a sample. We didn't just check, you know, 100 U.S. citizens. We looked at all U.S. citizens in this certain age range. So this would be our population right here. And since it's talking about a population, it's giving us this information about 40% of deaths. That means this is a parameter because it's coming from a population. Let's try another one here. Parameter or statistic. From a random sample of 100 high school students in Oakland, it was determined that 78% had access to a smartphone. So is that going to be a statistic or a parameter? Well, the key word here is we took a sample of 100 high school students in Oakland. So there are definitely more than 100 high school students in Oakland. We just took a random sample. Random is also gonna be important later on in this class. So since we're looking at a random sample, that makes this a statistic. So that 78% that had access to a smartphone, that is a statistic. All right, another example. So statistics or parameters. A Gallup poll asked a random sample of 1,045 U.S. adults whether they thought Barry Bonds was telling the truth when he said he did not know he was taking steroids. 42% said probably not. 33% said definitely not. So are these two numbers, are they statistics, are they parameters, or do we not have enough information to tell? All right, that is time. So let's see, hopefully you saw the keyword here that we took a sample. And when we take samples and get information, that means these are statistics, sample statistics. Next example, statistics or parameters. Out of all 435 members of the U.S. House of Representatives, it is found that 23.2% are female and that 3% are of Asian descent. Both of these numbers are now an all-time high. So are these statistics, parameters, or not enough information? All right, so hopefully you saw some keywords up here. It was out of all 435 members. There are a total of 435 members in the U.S. House of Representatives. This is out of all of them. So that means that's our population. And when we get information about a population, that means it is a parameter. So these two numbers are parameters. All right, next up. So we also talked a little bit when I said statistics about analyzing data, gathering data. So what is data? Data is facts or information collected for analysis. All right. Also, we, we're going to have to go over something called a treatment here. So a treatment is a specific condition applied to an individual in an experiment. All right. So treatments are things that we do in experiments. So now we have three methods to gather data that we're going to look at right now. Those three methods are, number one, a survey. So a survey is just when you ask people questions. You've all probably taken part in a survey at one point or another. Filling out your Google form on the first day of class, that was technically a survey. I surveyed you lots of, about lots of things. All right, an experiment. Hopefully you've done this in science class. We will probably do some of these in class. 
I don't know with distance learning, but we, we usually do some of these experiments. With experiments, a treatment is assigned. So one group is assigned to do something, another group is assigned to do something else, or not assigned to do anything. We usually ch decide randomly who gets what, and then we see what happens. We compare the results. We'll talk more about experiments later. And if we're not assigning the treatments, if we're just going to sit back and watch what happens, that is an observational study. All right, so what did these fall under? So example one, counting M&Ms to find the number of each color. All right, well, we're not really assigning any sort of treatment there. We're not really just asking people questions. All right, so not assigned treatment and not asking questions. That would be, I don't have it written down here. That would be an observational study. Right, because we did not randomly assign treatments and we did not just ask questions. Next one, does eating M&Ms reduce stress? Assign one group of people to eat M&Ms and another not to, and then compare the results. All right, so it's specifically said to assign. All right, so the treatment here is making people eat M&Ms or asking people to eat M&Ms. So this, since we are assigning things, assigning treatments is an experiment. All right, and lastly, ask all the people in your class how often they eat M&Ms. Right, so we're just asking them. So when you just ask people things, that is a survey. You're surveying them. All right, so a couple more examples, then we're done. So a typical hour of primetime television shows three to five violent acts. Linking family interviews and police records shows a clear association between time spent watching TV as a child and later aggressive behavior. So we do we think that this is a survey, an experiment, or an observational study? All right, well, did we assign any sort of treatment? It just said linking family interviews and police records show a clear association. It didn't say we forced kids to sit down to watch TV and then waited to see if they were aggressive later in their life. We just asked if they did watch TV. All right, so this is an observational study. Mm -hmm. We are not assigning treatments, but there is some sort of treatment here, watching TV or watching violence on TV. So that makes this an observational study. Next up, a political strategist randomly calls 1,000 people that live in a particular voting district in the Bay Area and asks people if they approve of the job their senator is doing or if they disapprove. All right, so what is that going to fall under? All right, so we are randomly calling 1,000 people and just asking them questions. So if we're just asking people questions, that is a survey. So we're surveying those people. It's a pretty common thing to do for political candidates. Right. Last one here. 200 volunteers are made to play Mario Kart for two hours and then asked to drive a car from one location to another. Another 200 people are asked to drive from that same location to that same other location without doing anything special first. The average driving speed of each group is found and compared to determine if playing Mario Kart leads people to driving differently. So what type of way to gather data was that? All right, so the key bit of information here is that one of these groups was made to play Mario Kart. I know it just sounds awful. I used to play all the time. All right, so made to play Mario Kart first, that is assigning a treatment. The other group did not. And then we compared those two results. So since we assigned a treatment, that is an experiment. Maybe those people that played Mario Kart for two hours first were throwing turtle shells at each other on the way there. I know I usually drove faster after playing Mario Kart because we were racing. I wanted to win. All right, so today we covered what is statistics. We went over the difference between populations and samples and parameters in statistics. And then we went over the three ways we have of gathering data, which are surveys, experiments, and observational studies. All right, there'll be another video here posted soon that you can watch.